It's a long and dusty road that my feet are traveling on. And sometimes, oh, the clouds look dark and low. Oh, but I've got, I've got to keep the faith and walk that straight and narrow way to reach that place that I will call my home. My home is just around the bend. I think about it now and then. Reunion by the million everywhere. But the one that I so long to see is the one who fled and died for me. My home, my home, a place I long to be. me the world's looking for now so many here hold oh, this world so dear that I am just a stranger here just passing through on a temporary stay but I'm looking forward to the time when all of heaven will be mine i'll watch and pray for it could be just any day my home is just around the bend i think about it now and then reunion by the million everywhere but the one that I so long to see is the one who fled and died for me. My home, my home, a place I long to be. My home is just around the bend. I think about it now and then. Reunions by the million everywhere. But the one that I so long to see is the one who fled and died for me. My home, my home, a place I long to be. Yes, my home is just around the bend. I think about it now and then. My home, my home, a place I long to be. My home, my home, a place I long to be. For that's my home Well, I'm not giving up No, I'm not turning round by the grace of God, I'll win a shining crown someday. Well, I'll keep holding on to that nail scar. I'm not giving up, no, I'll keep going on. I've been walking through the valley. This field of tears. Times I've even questioned, even if my Lord was near, ever done it? 
times that old pimp turn Says why not turn around You can't get any farther No, you're just losing ground I'm not giving up To tell me there's been something bothering me. Why is it that old devil he won't let God's children be? My, 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 you see, he has purpose and determined to get right in the way, turn us from the way of life and lead our soul astray. Well, I'm not giving up No, I'm not turning around By the grace of God I win a shining crown Someday Well, I'll keep holding on To that nail scarred hand I'm not giving up No, I'll keep Going on. Giving up, give it up. No, I'm not turning round. Turning round. By the grace of God, I win a shining crown. Someday, well, I'll keep holding on. Holding on. To that nail scar. I'm not giving up, no, I'll keep going, giving up, no, I'm not turning around, by the grace of God, I'll win a shining crown, someday, well, I'll keep holding on, holding on. Church of God, thank you so much for allowing us to come this way, this way once again. Amen. We are here today to bring glory to God. We are here today to allow the Spirit to have His ruling reign. If in any way, in any shape, we're in the way of the Spirit of God blessing, we want to sit down and we want to get out of the way. But we want to lift up our Lord and our Savior yes. Jesus Christ today, and we want to ask the power of the Holy Spirit now yes. to come down yes. and have ruling reign in this service. Thank you, Jesus. It's all because of what Jesus did for you and I. Yes. That we're able to be here today and to do what we're doing. And to continue to place the word of God out there and to give that word a testimony. Yes. I'd like to say that we were blessed in Sunday school this morning. Such a blessing. The good singing. Brother Edsel. Boy, you just get better all the time. Where'd he go? He was right there. Needing to go. But he gets better all the time. Uh, just, just so wonderful. Uh, Brother Willard, thank you for what you said this morning. We do need to fall in love with the love letter yes. that God has given us. Right. That was good. Yes. Brother Willard, one of our members, has been for a long time. We appreciate him so much. It's so good to see him able to be in service here today. Now, in following with our service, I'd like to introduce to you, good friend, my brother Wayne Edwards. Yes. yes. Amen. Glory. Yes. Good morning. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. This church is special in the Gideon camp, and I guess I'm one of the oldest Gideons. I've been in the Gideons about 22 years. But what makes the difference is what God does in your life. And I'm going to take, I, I had the privilege to go to Alabama for a convention a number of years ago, and a man came up and spoke. Uh, Buck Buckaroo had a uh, trucking company, and he uh, he didn't know the Lord, but he had a daughter, Susan, and she was in the fifth grade, and she got one of these little Bibles that we had passed out, praise the Lord, 
come to know the Lord, but she couldn't ever get him to know the Lord. So finally, Buck was traveling, he was down in Texas someplace, and he would generally go out, do his work, and buy a 12-pack and go home and drink beer, and, and then he'd go to sleep and get up the next day and, and continue on. But that night when he went to open up his shaving kit, she had put this little Bible in there. And she had him read it, and I, I'll be honest with my age, my uh, memory is the exact verse, but he was saying that God loves you and so do I. And yeah. Dad, you need to make a difference. You need to wow. accept it. He went on to know the Lord. Uh, he accepted the Lord, and that's not the whole story because it goes on that he spoke, and he spoke about his walk with the Lord and spoke about Susan. Susan was now grown about 23, 24 years old. She had, uh, she had a husband, and they had decided uh, that they would adopt a couple kids. She worked with the, uh, uh, with the Florida Ministry, I mean, uh, you know, with the Florida Workers so for Kids, and they took two kids in. But I guess what struck me was that she had one that she picked up, oh, about, it had been a month or so ago you know, before uh, there, and the kids had been locked in a basement you know, for like, oh, for like two weeks. When she got him, she had no place to take him, so she brought him home. So, uh, and she's just going to keep him for five or ten days so she could find him a home. And the little boy was, uh, he wasn't dumb, but he went to her husband, and he said, uh, you're not going to make me go away, are you? And he looked at his wife and he said, Susan, what's one more? And so they adopted this little boy, and they had three. And I remember Buck saying, uh, I got to call Susan. I'm not sure whether, we've got any, whether I've got any more grandchildren or not. <laughs> but I'm going to tie that a little bit into how God works be, because... He laid it on our heart, my wife and I, and we decided we would adopt. So we adopted two. And, uh, you know, it's turned out good. And uh, they called us a couple of bit later, and we thought two was enough. And they asked us, would we take two more? They had two that had special needs. Okay? And so we took two more. And that was a year later. So I thought, that's it. You know, that's it. So my wife gets a phone call on a... On a Wednesday morning, we got three kids that are in serious trouble, have got to be taken out of this home today. Would you take them at least temporarily, or would you take them? So my wife called me and they said, "If would we do it? She said, these are nice kids. Uh, these, uh, they were seven and 11 at that time. So I said, okay. So we went down and uh, the kids had five minutes notice that they were being moved. And you pack their whole life in the back of your car. And they were very quiet coming home. We only took the two. They were, the other was causing a lot of trouble. The family they were with had threatened to knock the girl's teeth out. And that's how bad it gets. But we got them home that night. And uh, Haley, which was seven at the time, my wife took her in to say her a uh, prayer, and she said, please, Lord, make us good enough that we never have to leave here. And my wife came out and said, she's never leaving. So now I have adopted six, and I got 10 grandchildren besides the three I raised. And it's, and it's all because I went to work with the Gideons. And it's all because of the money. We're in a... And I can't work as much for the Gideons. These are great guys, but I'm almost the oldest, except for old man Tommy back there. <laughs> but, you know, we're in 191 countries, and I think, I think we're a couple years away from planting the one billionth Bible, I think, I read if I read it all. And I can't make all the Saturday morning meetings, but I can tell you that there's nothing better than the Word of God. Yes. Well, do you love the Lord this morning? Yes. yes. Yes, yes. I'd like to ask you a question this morning. Why did you get up and come to church today? Why do we? Because we love God. Amen. Amen. 
Why do we wear these suits and ties? <laughs> if you know me, I do not like a suit and tie. <laughs> but I ask, why do we do this? <laughs> why do we hand out these testaments? For one reason. One reason only. See the lost saved. Yes. That's, that's it. It's all we're about right there, church. I want you to imagine something today. Imagine if you didn't have God's word. Imagine, who would you call on in time of need? The altar was full of people praying this morning. Who would you call on? Nobody. 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 Here's the number to think about. There's over four billion unsaved people in the world today over 4 billion unpeople saved do you know in the United States is the third largest missionary country in the world I read that not long ago that was kind of shocking to me we live in the land of free we can stand here and we don't have to worry about someone coming through those back doors brother Doug Come on. and shooting us and, and killing us like they do in other countries but we're still the third largest missionary country in the world. A little girl came home from school one day. She said, Daddy, Daddy, look what a man in a suit gave me today. Can I read it? Can I read it? Little girl's dad looked at it. Let me take it to work tonight. Let me look over it. I'll let you know in the morning. The dad took the testament and he put it in his pocket and he went to work at night. This young man was a miner. He worked in the coal fields. That night, they had a cave in. Thirteen miners trapped. What did they have? Had God's word. When they got to the thirteen men, They were all dead. None of them made it. They, they found the little girl's dad. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. All 13 miners had signed oh, hey, back this testimony. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. No. No. Isaiah 55, 11. God's word will not return void. Front of the testament, the dad wrote to my little girl, it's okay to read this. Yes. Last fall, I <clears throat> had the pleasure of going to Appalachian State University. As they took us out, let us out with our testaments. And there's three of us from this camp went, one from Independence. We got to stand and hand God's word out to these kids. A lot of times, we, you know, we can't go in that room or we can't be over there. I think Mr. Perry kind of got sidetracked at times and he went wandering off. But that's all right. He was doing God's work. <laughs> we stood there and handed out God's word. From 8 in the morning to 1130, we handed out over 2,500 of these testaments Amen. to these college students. You now, we don't know what happens. We just know it's our job to hand them out. And if it wasn't for churches like this one, of helping his ministry, we couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. Amen. Every out of six of these testaments purchased, a Gideon purchased one out of six. The church, there would be no Gideon ministry if it wasn't for y'all. We try to do our part. As Brother Doug said, 7 o'clock in the mornings, we're praying Saturday mornings. I don't attend every Saturday. I go when I can. 
but they're praying for churches, they're praying for pastors, they're praying for doors to be opened yes. for us as Gideon. Yes. For people to be saved. You know, that's what it's all about. It ain't about me standing here today. It ain't about these men here. It's not about the Gideons International. It's about the one and only. Amen. How can Jesus I believe? Come on. How do I know? Come on. Thank you, Are these miracles real? Come on. That's what the dear brother asked me. Last year at this time, Come on. outside the Samaritan's Kitchen in Winston-Salem, yes. you know, Acts 1-8 tells us once we receive that power, yes. once that Holy Ghost comes upon yes. us, that it's our responsibility. Oh. Jerusalem, right here in Allegheny. Come on. Judea, around Come on. this country. Yes. Amen. Samaria, yes. and to the uttermost parts of the earth, we are to take his word. Yes. Yes. And as I handed that testament, how can I know? I said, brother, you can know because it's in his word. Yes. You can know because every day when you open those eyes and look around you, the miracle of his work is about us every day. Yes. I said, but how can I believe? I said, well, you can believe what the word tells us. Yes. That we are all sinners. Yes. And if you'll confess with your mouth... And as for his forgiveness, yes. you will be saved. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And as we went to the back of this little testament, the back of every one is the road to salvation. Thank you, Jesus. And there on the street in Winston-Salem, young Andreas professed his faith in our Lord and Savior. And you know, there's one other thing in the back of this book that many people miss. Because as Gideons, we don't stop. We're just showing them the way. We then encourage them to find a local congregation yes. Yes. to where they can hear the word. Yes. Where they can build their faith. Because he tells us in Romans, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. And Andreas said, I walk the streets. I don't know of a church. Just so happens there were some people handing out clothing to the homeless in the parking lot right across the street from Samaritan's Kitchen. I said, well, let's walk over here and let's see if this dear sister here can maybe direct you to a church. God is good. Yes. Yes. It was a church handing out those clothes. It was a church that was there. Yes. We provided the testament. The church provided the congregation for that young man. Yes. And God gave the increase. Yes. 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 Praise God. He is good. Yes. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word. Yes. You know. He tells us in Roman 10, how can they call on them whom they have not believed, and how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? Church, they've got to have the word. They've got to hear. Yes. You know, as we parted ways, as I left young brother Andreas in the, in the hands of that that sweet, sweet young lady. I was approached by another young man. I barely speak English. Senor, senor, un moment. Yes. He said, the, the book, can I have a book? I said, sure. See, because church, as you were told, we distribute in over 190 countries. We distribute the Word of God. Thanks to you, 
you distribute with us in over 90 languages. So that day, we were able to give this young man a copy of God's word in his own language. And I asked him as best I could and as best as he could understand if he knew our Jesus. And a smile came on his face and he nodded. Yes, he knew Jesus. You see, he needed this one. And he reached down in the little sack he was carrying. He said, because the one he was carrying, he about wore out. You see, church, because of your faithfulness. Four years before that, someone had given him this testament. And since 2007, Trinidad had been ministering to other lost, homeless, Spanish-speaking people on the streets of Winston-Salem. As he said, holding his church with the word of God. Church, his, his word does not return void. But how will they hear? How will they hear? Whether we're placed in scriptures at a school, whether we're at a jail, whether we're at a prison, whether we're on the street, we ask the power of God to be with us. We ask for his leadership each and every time we have these distributions. Many times things happen that you'd say shouldn't happen. I know of a man that said, I was nearby when they was having a college distribution in Georgia, and they thought I was a student and gave me a copy of God's word. They didn't know he was homeless, uh, jobless, homeless, and didn't know where his next meal was coming to. When he found the meal, he had something he sat down with and he read through God's word with the time that he had, and he came back later to say it's because of what you did that I come to know the Lord. He said, I wasn't supposed to have gotten that Bible. I, oh, yes, you was. Oh, yes, you was. Now, maybe it was one that a, a student received a copy of God's Word and said, well, I don't really need that. Threw it in the trash can. That night, a night watchman comes by and says, what's this I find? He has a little time on his break, and he begins reading into God's Word. This happened in South Carolina. And you know what happened? The Spirit of God began to convict him of his sin. And you know what? Maybe he wasn't supposed to got that Bible. Oh, yes, he was. It was right where it should have been. He left it on the table, and the next day a student come by and picked it up, and he found the Word of God. So you see these things, we think, well, maybe it shouldn't be. Well, you ask God to direct it. You ask the Spirit to be upon it, and you ask God's blessings on it. As you give it out and pray for each and every copy of God's Word that's distributed, God's going to bless it. Like, like the Word says, it shall not return void. I've been blessed to be in places where I was with Brother Lee there at Appalachian and where the word was passed out. You know, one young man said, we're a cheated generation. What do you mean? Well, we've been given everything materially. We've not been given spiritually. Come on, that's right. That's right. Wow. Yes. Explain to me. And he went on and he said, I was given everything all my life except the word of God. Come on. Somehow he had already come to a knowledge of God's word while he was there uh, at this point where he was at at Appalachian. And he shared that with me. And he said, I'm so glad to have you here. Now, I'll be at another college and a professor come out and he wanted me arrested. He would like to see him take me away because he said I shouldn't be there. And I said, well, Sorry, Professor, we have permission to be here. We didn't just jump out and decide to do this. We planned ahead. We have permission. This is where we're supposed to be, maybe just on this one spot. But here we are with God's word. Yes. So I'm sorry if you're unhappy. We're going to continue what we're doing. Yes. Yes. Ever how it works, we do things, as we said in Sunday school, decently and in order. Yes. Okay? Yes. All right? yes. And we rely on the Holy Spirit to direct us in all these ways. Yes. You know, we could just quit right now and have an invitation and know oh. we've had church, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We uh, had uh, Brother Essel at our church uh, a few days ago in our revival, and he sang with us. And it's always a blessing to have Brother Essel to come and sing for us. And, and he made a statement while he was there that our church had sort of become like a second home to him. And you know what? I'm about to feel that way about 
It's part of the church of God. Amen. It's good. It's good to be back this morning. And, and I hope this song will bless you. As I know that if you're born again this morning, you're looking forward to going home with Jesus. One day. Yes. I'm going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. I've made my reservation for a mansion in the sky. I may not know the moment, nor I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away. I'm listening for the trumpet to sound most any time. And the crown of life that's waiting, thank God, will soon be mine. I've got my invitation through a place called Calvary. By the precious blood of Jesus, this trip's been paid for me. I'm going home to Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. I've made my reservation for a mansion in the sky. I may not know the moment, or I may not know the day. But I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away. The captain of the vessel is calling, get on board. And the destination's heaven, safe on that crystal shore where we'll meet again the Savior and our loved ones who have gone. There to live through all eternity. Thank God I'm going home. I'm going home to Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. I made my reservation for a mansion in the sky. I may not know the moment or I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away. Well, I may not know the moment or I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away. Just a minute, if I could. Uh, I'd like to try to paint for you a, a picture that illustrates the urgency of reaching the world for the gospel. I believe one of our brothers already mentioned about the, America being the third largest number of lost people in the world. And I learned recently from something I read that if you took all the lost people in the world and lined them up single file, it would go around the world 13 times. If you got in your automobile and drove eight hours a day, 55 miles an hour, it would take four years to get from one end of that line to the other. But something even more amazing, when you reach the end of that line, that number would be grown by 35,000 miles. Does that sort of give you an idea of the urgency and the, and the importance of reaching the world with the gospel? After all, that's the main mission of the Gideons, is to get the word out to the world. Well, it just happened. There was a couple of brothers named Ed and Jim that had been attending a Gideon meeting in Minneapolis. And they were about to leave or did leave that meeting and was about to return home and not being familiar with the streets in Minneapolis, they got lost and found themselves uh, in a deserted area, lost. And they came across a group of rough-looking men gathered around together talking. And Ed, being from a small town, he decided, you know, he was pretty trustworthy, so he decided to get out and ask those men for directions on how to find the interstate. So he got out and approached them. And, and while he was talking to them, he found out that one of them was a new Christian. 
And he had a New Testament, a Gideon Testament, witnessing to his friends of his newfound faith. This man received the New Testament from the Gideons while he was in prison and got saved as a result of reading that New Testament. And here he was already sharing with his friends his newfound faith. Now, isn't that what we're supposed to do? So he, he continued to talk to this man, and the man asked him, he said, do you know where, he found out that, that Ed was a Christian, he said, do you know where we can find some more Gideon Testaments that we can give to my friends here? And so Ed just happened, just happened, that he had four Gideon New Testaments in the car. So he told the man, said, you follow me and we'll get you a Bible. So he went to his car and he got his, his New Testaments out, his Gideon Testament, and give each one of the men <clears throat> so they'd have a Bible of their own. And after going through the helps in the front of the Bible with those four men and going over the plan of salvation in the back of the Testament, all four of those men prayed the sinner's prayer and was saved. Boy, I tell you, I, I would like to have been the Gideon that went to that prison and give that New Testament to that man. And who knows, the Sparta Church of God may have provided the money to buy that testament and provide those other four testaments for those four men. We don't know, but God knows. And it's already been said, and you can't say too much, God's Word will not return unto him void. So it didn't just happen. Do you believe that it just happened that 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 man came by in the middle of the night in a deserted area and answered the prayer of a man praying for more Bibles? That didn't just happen. God's hand was in that. And there again, God's word does not return void. How many people have come to the saving knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ because it's part of the church of God? You know, I dwell on this a lot. How many people have come to save the knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ because of our church of God? You know, only God knows that. I've got some wild guesses. <laughs> a bunch. I want to thank y'all. Y'all are so good. So you, as you know, you're just a partnership with the Gideons. My favorite saying, you pay, we give away. Brothers, sisters, because of you, we get to hand them Bibles out. All these testimonies because of people just like you. Yes. You know, James chapter 2, verse 20. <coughs> but we ought not know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Right. Sparta Church of God, <laughs> your works, I tell you. Yeah, y'all all right. <laughs> <laughs> Outside the city of Junia, Uganda, some brothers, Gideon's of mine, they're on an ISB, an International Scripture Blitz. They are determined to get to a school that hadn't been visited in years by the Gideons. Very hard to get to. Four-wheel drive is the only thing that can get there on a good day. But they're determined to get there. When they, get, when they crest the hill, they see the school. The kids are dismissing from school. They finally got there. Six to 700 students dismissed as they crest the hill. They go into the school. The teachers are still there. The Gideons explain why they're there, and the teachers are so happy. They've been praying for this moment, but they start ringing the bell, and all six to 700 students come back. They hand out to them precious words of God to them students, and they take them and hold them to their heart and just know how precious it is to them. Many were given their life to Christ that day, but the teachers led the Gideons into their library. It consisted of all 10 books that was in their library. And all ten of them was the precious word of God that had been distributed there years ago oh. from other Gideons. Yeah, yeah. Their total library of that school. So you understand what a precious gift this is. Oh, yeah. As I have ten Bibles at my house, and you probably do too, four or five, whatever. Thank you, Sparta Church of God, for what you mean to all these children around the world. Oh. Have you ever wondered and questioned, God, what's my purpose in life? Yeah. You ever wondered about that? Yeah. The Bible, the Word. The Bible contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. 
Its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding, its histories are true, and its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it, believe it to be safe, and practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's charter. Here, paradise is restored, heaven opened, and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is its grand subject. Our good, the design, and the glory of God it ends. It should fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, a river of pleasure. It is given you in life. It will be opened at the judgment. And be remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility, will reward the greatest labor, and will condemn all who trifle with its sacred contents. A, a small girl wrote this testimony. It was given in the Gideon New Testament in my country. My four friends wanted to read it too. We carefully cut apart the Gospels and shared them with each other. And all five of us were saved through that one New Testament. Oh, amen. Amen. Yes. That comes from the back of a, a tribute card that, that's out here in your foyer. And uh, we appreciate the people that have used this card program to buy scriptures and to send yes. across, around the world. Yes. You send a Gideon Expression card and you also send God's Word. You touch lives in hotels, prisons, hospitals, schools, military bases, and more. Yes. And as part of the Church of God, you all are so generous with your giving. Amen. This is just, just one more tool to touch the lives of people. Not only touch the lives in the hotels and the prisons, but to touch the life of the person that you send this card to. Yes. Yes. We thank you guys. You're, yes. you're special to us. Yes. The Gideons, the Gideon, this is just a special day. This is not a day that we see at every church service we go to. Right. This is a special day for the Allegheny Amen. Gideon. Good morning, church. everybody. Morning. Got to take these hearing aids out because if I don't, I'll hear myself and I won't speak loud enough for y'all to hear me even with this help. <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's a joy to be here this morning with you to speak for the Gideons. Uh, you get super support in this church, and it's easy to speak. Some churches, you know, it's just that, you know, you really got to be filled by the Spirit. And I'm filled by the Spirit this morning. I hope everybody else is. But anyway, I want to tell you about the Gideon ministry. The Gideons, the first order of business is the personal witness for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The second order of business is to place these little testaments and Bibles in the traffic lanes of life. And yes. you've, hear, you've heard a few words about that this morning. Now, let me tell you a short little story about, it's not a story, it's a testimony. Yes. A testimony about a boy named Happy in Lesotho, South Africa. He was 14 years old, he was abandoned by his mother and father, and he was gonna kill himself, really. He, he'd come to the end of his rope. You know, Little kid, 14 years old, out in some place like uh, uh, a big city, you know, he's got to eat. And, you know, he just come to the end of his rope, and he was over in the dump, the trash pile. And that's where he would get his food. And he's, he saw this little book down there, and uh, he opened it up. And you can do this pretty easy with this testament. To where the scripture says, when my mother, <laughs> can you imagine it? When my mother, my father forsake me, you will take me up. Yes. And that's exactly what happened to him. This little boy grew up, he become a Gideon, and last, last year, a year ago, he was a testimony speaker at the Gideons International in, in Phoenix. Yes. So that, that's what happened, uh, like we said before, Isaiah 55, 11, God's word will not return void, and it certainly didn't in that, in that case. Now, I want to tell you, uh, it, it's an honor to be able to personally witness to somebody and have them accept Jesus Christ, their yes. personal Lord and Savior. And I was
rehabilitation hospital in one of the boroughs up in New York City. I don't know which borough it was. <clears throat> don't pay much attention because I don't drive up there. I just ride and they dump me off somewhere. But anyway, I was in, I met Reuben Seymour. He was in a rehab hospital. And uh, I took a Bible in. We have an escort. And they take us around to the rooms, you know, and this is uh, Mr. Reuben Seymour. And I went in and I said, hi, Mr. Seymour. I got a, I got a, a Bible for you. It was a testament, but sometimes you have to say Bible because they don't know what a testament is. So I got to where I'm saying I got a Bible for you. And he looked at me, and he goes, you know, like that. I says, uh, what's, f and sometimes you got to tell them it's free. So I said, well, that's free. And he said, oh, well, you know, that was a little different story. And he, he took it, you know. And uh, I said, uh, Mr. Seymour, I said, uh, do you know uh, Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior? And it didn't seem like he would. And... Uh, he said, what's that bunk, you know? And I said, uh, well, uh, I said, uh, let me ask you another question, Mr. Seymour. I said, uh, if you was to die tonight, where would you go, heaven or hell? And he said, who cares? I said, boy, you know, I thought this to myself. And, I, and really, uh, uh, you know, was Jesus Christ ever angry? I don't know if he was or not, but you know, he cleared that temple of all those. Uh, and it seemed like he ought to have a little anger there, but they, they said he had a night. He didn't do it immediately when he saw all this uh, bad stuff going on in the temple. So uh, maybe he wasn't angry, but my, my anger shot through me. And I said, uh, Mr. Seymour, and I, you know, I said, if you were to die tonight, where would you go? And he sloughed me off. And I said, I said, I can't understand you. And I, I, maybe I shouldn't have went this far. But Lord, thank you that I did. And I said, I can't understand you when you've got a choice between heaven and hell. Why in the world wouldn't you receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Well, he looked at me and he says, I can do that. And I said, well... I said, well, let me, let me, in the back of this little testament is a Roman road, what we call a Roman road. And, you know, for all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. Well, I went down and re read these, read these, and uh, he said, uh, or I said to him, uh, after he said he can do that, he will receive Christ, his personal Lord and Savior, yes. live for him, being assured that he will go to heaven when he dies. And I said, uh, and I read this, confessing God that I'm a sinner and believing the Lord Jesus Christ died for my sins on the cross and raised, my, and raised for my justification, I do now receive and confess him as my personal Savior. I, I said, Mr. Seymour, would you do that? Would you sign your name and date this? He said, I can do that. So he did. And uh, so I, I took it, you know, and I gave it to him. And I said, Mr. Seymour, I said, I want you to keep that so you know the day you accepted Christ, your personal Lord and Savior. And he started crying. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> he said, you mean I get to keep that one too? Lord. I said, yes, you do. Thank you, Jesus. But, but thank you, folks. And uh, I appreciate it so much. I uh, appreciate it so much that you uh, support the Gideons like you do. Thank you, Jesus. I could not go on without him, I know. This world would overwhelm my soul. I could not see the right way.
troubled his soul. He whispered sweet peace to me. He speaks in a still. That dispel all my fear, and when I am cast down and I trouble in my soul, that still small voice I hear. He whispers. Sweet peace to me. I whisper, sweet peace to me. When I am cast down and troubled in soul, he whispers. Sweet peace to me. When I am cast down and troubled in soul, he whispers, Sweet peace. Aren't you glad for that?